girl not a brat but you know that and i'm back and then give another video for returning subscriber was popping and if you know we can brat in this so we're just gonna get into it because your girl been lacking with vlogmas i know i've been lacking and i wasn't supposed to i literally have vlogmas planned out but it's just the fact that i had to keep being reminded that i have to do this life update and it's not that i have to i don't have to because i don't owe anybody anything but in order for me to push out the rest of my content for the rest of this year to for everything that makes sense your girl gotta do a life update because a lot of stuff happened and it's like there's like a i don't know i feel like there's a section of my life that's missing that y'all don't know about and i don't know it's like it's it's not giving what it's supposed to so we're just gonna talk um but disclaimer before we begin this video i'm not sparing nobody in this fucking life update because nobody has spared me i really don't give a fuck about how anybody feels about this um hopefully you don't start no mess but if it does it just does i'm simply just vocalizing how i feel um what events have taken place that have made me feel a certain way what has caused certain things it's all gonna make sense um and like i said i'm just here being transparent and just letting y'all know what the fuck's been going on because your girl been missing and um everything needs to make sense before i start dropping the rest of the content that i have planned so um let's take it back i know it's december let's take it back let's take it back let's take it back to about september so um september basically um as y'all know i have college college yes your girl's in college um and everything was cool up until i got sick i got sick i want to say the third week of september no either the third week of september or like in the beginning it was yeah it was the third week of september i got sick and um girl when i tell you i was sounding horrible sinuses just it oh my gosh i had a cough it was so bad like to the point where um i wasn't in class i wasn't in class and that's kind of what started everything basically um i was sick for about three weeks yes i was sick for three weeks the third week i was like you know what enough's enough let me go get checked out i got checked out at um the wellness center which is technically like our hospital on campus um and you know i had a sinus infection and i was given a steroid um and an inhaler i've never had an inhaler before um but and i still have my inhaler i still use it because i have a cough now um which i'll explain <laughs> um but yeah i was sick for three weeks and because i was sick for three weeks it caused me to not go to class like when i tell y'all um i was in such a funk and i'm the type of person that when i'm sick i don't get sick often knock on wood um but when i do get sick i'm sick and i don't focus or dedicate my time to do anything or I do like anything because I'm sick and professors weren't understanding that I was supposed to constantly tell them every single day every week oh I'm sick I'm not coming to class oh I'm sick I'm not coming to class but I'm gonna stay on top of this no I don't know where y'all from how y'all grew up or what y'all be doing but one thing about it two things for sure if I am sick baby I'm sick I'm not worried about doing no homework I'm not worried about catching up on no assignments that I missed I'm not worried about none of that um so me missing class kind of like sucked me into like this start of my depression um and basically during the time that i was sick i was doing nothing but hookah and smoking every single day and i started to go to the gym you know just doing shit to just get me up and running but at the same time it just wasn't working and mind y'all i haven't i smoke but i haven't smoked this heavily since um i went to dsu four years ago four years ago four years ago yeah at dsu i smoked every weekend every weekend all week throughout the week and every freaking weekend like i <laughs> i was a fiend back then i ain't gonna cat i was fiending okay but you know it happens and you know one thing about smoking at least for me um smoking helps me cope with a lot of things it helps me relax and i don't know when i'm high i just get super super creative that's me when i'm sober at nighttime um, which is why y'all probably see me on social media sometimes acting a fool because I'll be up just being mad creative, but no, seriously, like when I'm high, um, it definitely increases like my creativity, but it also, um, decreases my energy level. So like I said, I was, you know, getting high, I was, you know, doing hookah and just doing stuff to just help me cope with, you know, me being sick. And it just sucked that I was sick because when I'm sick, like I'm sick, you know, like I don't 
I just have to go through it and I hate going through being sick like it's so it is so annoying and just such a, a prolonged process like when I tell you I was so over being sick it was ridiculous so the meds did work I ended up you know starting to feel better but because I was sick I missed a lot of class time um I take chemistry and biology and I had chemistry lab um lecture lecture lab and I also had biology lecture lab um and for those who don't know um I originally when I first came into college I was a biochemistry major um but in the midst of me being sick I ended up switching my major to just strictly biology um because biochemistry is hard as fuck like I it sounded good at first because it was kind of close to like being a nurse so at least that's how Roman described it but um in all actuality biochemistry majors are really for people who want to be doctors by the time they get their degree I don't want to be a doctor by the time I get a degree I want to be out of school by then I don't want a master's I don't want anything that comes after that I really just want my degree and um I want to be a nurse um so run me that <laughs> um but yes i changed my major um mid semester uh because it just was getting too much and like i said because i had missed a lot of class time um you know with me being in chemistry and biology you have to be physically present in those lectures to understand the labs um my bio lab i'm passing i'm failing the fuck out of biology um it's bad, I'm gonna do the pass or no fail option, meaning that um, it's not gonna count against me and it's not gonna hurt me. Um, I just have to retake that class probably in the summertime or at the community college to then get the credits to transfer it back here. So the biology requirement is taken care of, which I will do. Um, other than that, my grades are really good. I have all A's and B's, um, except for my English class. I have to turn in like eight missing assignments. Yes, eight, because um, I missed all of them and y'all would think like now you used to be a writer why are you missing all that work well I've already taken comp one which is a requirement for my major um, and as y'all know I had a little issue with DSU um, I have my transcript but it never successfully got transferred to my school so I ended up having to take comp one again after I've already taken it and passed it so like granted the class is an easy A but it's just like I really don't have to take this class but I, I have to at this point, so whatever. Um, I'm just gonna do that. Um, uh, what else? In the midst of me, like I said, dropping, um, well, not dropping, but in the midst of me changing my major, I ended up dropping classes. I dropped this math class, um, and I also dropped my, the hell was that? I ended up dropping my math class, and I dropped my chemistry lecture and lab because um, I had missed so much work it was literally going to be physically impossible for me to make up a month's a month's worth of work and then continue on with the semester. Like I said, chemistry and biology are things that you have to physically be present for. And I wasn't present in those classes, so I ended up dropping them just because um, I didn't want to risk failing those classes and having them on my GPA, especially because they're something that I'm trying to do and I cannot afford to have bad grades. And I was never the type to have bad grades either. Um, it's just me being sick really just started all of this. So um, that's that. So, you know, I got sick, got a sinus infection. I was sick for three weeks. I changed my major from biochemistry to biology. I dropped three classes um, and here we are in October. <laughs> so October comes around and that's where shit just really just hits the fan. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to y'all. It was a lot of drama that should have been avoided. It was a lot of BS. And like I said, I'm not here to spare anybody. I'm not here to start shit. I'm literally here to vocalize um, my opinion about what I was going through, what I endured and it is what the fuck it is at this point. Um, like I said, I'm healing and going through everything. Um, oh, and also in the midst of me being sick, I also started therapy. That's another important thing I wanted to highlight. The girls in therapy. Um, I haven't been to therapy in three weeks. I could have sworn I had a session when I came back this past week, but apparently I never rescheduled another session. So I need to make sure I do that. Um, I'm going to put that in my notes um, and make sure that I do that. Um, tomorrow because your girl definitely needs a session before her birthday before the semester ends and before my friend comes so yeah um but yeah that's the the cap of september so in october you know i was basically trying to you know once i felt better i was trying to find a job 
um i wanted to work at bucks rack city which is a philly strip club in the middle of nowhere um i wanted to be a host um and y'all know well y'all probably don't know but a host basically is like the one that basically like gets the bookings for like the sections and stuff like that like that's who you talk to to book a section at that club basically and my friend destiny works there and she was you know trying to put me on and me and my roommate we were going to work there together um because she has a car and um it just didn't work out and i felt like it started it didn't work out because god knew that I don't want to I don't want a nine to five. I don't want a nine to five. I haven't had a nine to five in a year. And um, and I'm blessed to say that I haven't worked for anybody in a year. And he just knows that if I was to go back to a nine to five, I'd be miserable. And I feel like my life would just change. Like my life wouldn't be the same. Like granted, you know, anything is possible regardless of what you do. But there's a reason why I'm not working a nine to five right now, if that makes sense. Like there's a reason why God has blessed me to have the capability to work for myself and not work for anybody else for this past year. So I'm gonna just follow that path and keep working. You feel me? And just, you know, do what I need to do. I need to bring everything into full fruition. Okay, like I need to start getting back into manifesting. I need to get back into writing stuff down, journaling, meditating, all that good shit that I used to do. And that's what I started to do. Um, so yeah, the bucks didn't work out. I did, um, I definitely visited there multiple times. Bucks be lit. It's just in the middle of nowhere and it just be ass on certain nights because, you know, celebrities don't be there. Now, when a celebs is there, Bucks is packed the hell out. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, I'm trying to think. So, basically, um, what ended up happening, because I know y'all see, well, y'all probably can't tell, but there's a new setup, obviously. Um, I should have filmed it that way so it could have been more dramatic. I was like, you know, let me just cut my bed off and film this damn video. So, basically, um, I'm trying to think, y'all. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think. I tried to work at Bucks. It didn't work. Um, oh, I applied for a job at Barnes & Noble. It didn't work. Um, so, basically, I was having issues with my neighbors. My neighbors next door to my apartment. So, basically, um, in the old room that I used to stay in, which I'm going to get into, um my neighbors my white neighbors it's like eight white girls and not and one black girl yeah i know the ratio crazy um they blast their music a lot like i'm not talking about like regular good music like they literally blast like it's like jersey shore over here it's like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like i don't want to hear that it's two it's two o'clock in the morning on a fucking wednesday why are you blasting music I don't understand like I could literally lay down and what sucked about it was in my old room the wall that we share I can hear everything like I can hear their music when they blast it I can feel the vibrations of it everything and they blast our music through this big ass club speaker not a regular like Alexa or um Google Home like a big fat ass club speaker and I'm like there's no way there's there's literally there's no way that y'all bitches are that inconsiderate about blasting music right so i ended up going home this one weekend um and i started to go home a little bit just to you know balance myself out and to just not think about like you know all the shit that i was going through as far as stress was concerned and in our group chat we have a group me um floor chat um so basically what ended up happening was my roommate had asked about why there was music being blasted at 9 a.m and they just start gaslighting her in the group chat and disrespecting her calling her a victim saying she needs to start getting up earlier and um she needs to start her day early and be more productive first of all how did we get here like how did you get all of that from her simply asking why was y'all blasting your music at 9 a.m like that didn't make any sense to me and it pissed me off because it was like nobody in the group chat was defending her they was all just disrespecting her and gaslighting her and i and i personally know what it feels like to be gaslighted so of course y'all know me as soon as i got up I shut that shit down and I'll post the screenshots on the side. Y'all can pause and read, do what you want with that information. 
um i was eating the girls up i was respectfully eating the girls up in that group chat because i don't understand how all of a sudden now when i'm speaking up and saying something and defending her after y'all were being disrespectful for three hours nobody said anything came to her defense but once i said something now i'm aggressive oh i'm doing this i'm doing that and i had a brats being extra and that's what i don't like I, they know that I'm TikTok famous, so they call me neither Brad. I don't like that. You're not my friend. We're not cool. Y'all not my bitches. Don't call me neither Brad. I feel like you're saying that to be smart, and I feel like you're saying that, or you're calling me that to imply that, oh, because I'm just some public figure that, you know, that associates with how I act or how, you, how you're perceiving that how I act, if that makes sense. Like, I'm just some uppity ghetto raggedy bitch or something i don't fucking know and I don't, I don't give a fuck either but i was eating the girls up and you know one of the niggas in there called me miss potato head you really thought you ate you really really thought you ate that everybody knows my head is big as hell okay who gives a fuck it's nothing new it never stopped me from getting the the bitches and the niggas that i wanted so you you did all that and it got your ass ate the fuck up so what ended up happening was me and my best friend had came back to campus to fight because why not? Y'all bitches are talking all this shit. Like I'm at a point now where it's like, I don't want to talk no more. I just want to fight. So we, I said what I said and now I, I'm going to stand on what I said. And now I'm going to whoop your ass. Um, they weren't home. Um, my roommate ended up leaving, which I thought was weird. Cause it was just like, you, like I, you know, you feel what I'm saying? Like this wasn't my fight. I'm fighting it for you and you don't have the audacity to show whatever don't give a fuck um so and we ended up talking to my RA and I ended up telling her how I was feeling because she was going to get chewed out for not doing her job and not coming to my roommate's defense but you know after I had heard from her about everything that was going on and everything we had pretty much hashed it out talked about it um and left it alone um so that was that um then uh a couple weeks later this is when some bullshit starts so after that situation weeks later I just told y'all I had to drop three classes and one of them was my chemistry lab class. I mean, chemistry lecture class. I had chemistry lecture Mondays and Wednesdays from 11 to 12, 15. I missed out on those classes because I was, you know, sick and stuff. And then, you know, once I started to go back, you know, it was like, all right, you can't afford to miss no more class. You have to force yourself to go. So I ended up going to sleep this one night, right? I had that class at 11 and I got up at 10 every week to get up, get ready, whatever. I was woken up at 8 a.m. 8 a.m. I was woken up at 8 a.m. by my roommate so she could get her car out of the garage. Let me say it one more time. I was woken up at 8 a.m. so my roommate could get her car out of the garage. She had to put her money on my debit card to get her car out of the garage so she could go do hair. Y'all replay that and y'all tell me if I was wrong for my reaction, right? On the screen, I'll post my screenshots of what I said and what I posted on social media. Now, anybody that knows me know, knows I'm not a morning person. I'm almost certain y'all know that I'm not a morning person. I'm not a morning person. I hate getting up early in the morning. It's different if I plan to get up versus me being woken up. I hate being woken up. My mom used to do it. My grandma used to do it. I just used to do it. I, I hate it. I'm not a fucking morning person. Like, it's just that simple. It's that simple. And it wasn't the first time that she had done that, right? So, twice before... Well, one time before she woke me up to do our mutual friend at the time's hair. Why did you wake me up to do hair in our room when we have a living room? Like, still to this day, it doesn't make sense that you were willing to wake me up so you could go do hair in our room when we have a whole living room. Like, what's not clicking, Steven? It's not making any sense, right? So the reason why I said something to her was because that was like her third time doing it. And I feel like if I've established a boundary with you, stop crossing that boundary or don't cross it. Now, before when I had this problem with my roommate at the peer mediation, I was told, oh, um, I should have nipped it in the butt. I should have let her get away with everything. Da, da, da. Basically, it was pinned on on me. But it's like, come on now. We're in high, in high school. Fuck no. If, we, if we're in high school or what? Anyway. We're in college. We're all grown as fuck. We're all responsible for ourselves. Each one, 
each everybody's responsible for themselves i should not have to keep telling you about yourself i shouldn't have to keep telling you what you're doing wrong i you're grown you people be knowing what they be doing they just be doing shit on purpose until they find out that they, they fucking with the wrong person so um like i said i had to get up early to go to that class and when i tell you i could not go back to sleep i was pissed so yes i threw shade and yes it was passive aggressive but i don't give a fuck but like i said when that post was made everybody knows that it it wasn't that serious like everybody knows me like i don't i'm not a morning person so when everybody's seen the post that i made they didn't think anything of it and i even went as far as asking my own mother i was like now if you've seen this on social media what would you thought she said you just somebody woke you up like even harmony harmony is now six years old y'all know i asked my homegirl harmony y'all know who harmony is harmony is my cousin for those who don't know but i asked my homegirl harmony and she was like Nigel, you just don't like being waking up even i know that like that's why in the morning when i get up at 7 a.m i go out and i go with isha who's my mom and i go bother her until you wake up because i know you don't like being woken up now if a six-year-old knows that i don't like being woken up everybody else has grown itself to know that i don't like being woken up it's really just that simple so basically that post spiraled into some bs basically so what ended up happening was that same day i was in the in the living room slash kitchen dining area doing my homework or whatever and our mutual friend and my roommate had came in or whatever and you know they spoke or whatever went to the gym i didn't really say much because i was just irked but like by the time i got home my attitude was gone then my roommate comes back by herself takes a shower comes back and then she approaches me like i just want to say this because it's on my mind and i need to say something before hold on approaches everything if i if y'all if i really had recorded how this whole situation happened y'all would have thought she was ready to fight like the approach was wrong the tone was crazy it was it was just crazy so basically to make a long story short she's telling me how she don't do the social media shit about the post that i made but the crazy part about the post was only you knew it was about you. No one else knew. Like, I don't understand how this social media shit is crazy when nobody knows you on social media and there was no social media shit. Like, there was no beef. It was no extensive argument. It was nothing. Like, it it just was what I said. And I said what I said. And yes, I posted it twice because I was petty as fuck. We, I don't care. Like, no one else cared when I was woken up. So we're, I'm not going to give a fuck about nobody else's feelings. That's just that I'm just so tired of people doing shit to me. And then when I retaliate, now you know you was wrong. Shut up. Shut up. Please shut the fuck up. Like, I really, really hate that. Anyways. So basically, she's telling me how she feels or whatever. And I told her, like, you know, I just didn't appreciate being woken up. Like, you know, I don't like being woken up, blah, blah, blah. And like, she's not paying no attention. Like she keeps reiterating why she woke me up because she needed me. It, I'm not that person that you could depend on at 8 a.m. And that's okay. Everybody knows that. And clearly you're the only person that's not getting it. How are you mad at me for being mad at you because you did something to me? It's not, it, what? like insane is... <sighs> Alexa, play some of Walker insane because this is fucking crazy. Crazy. Okay. So at that point, I just start playing on my laptop because after I just told you how I felt about a situation and you neglected how I felt and tried to downplay it and reiterate it and try to manipulate it. Oh, but I needed you. I, my ears are closed. My ears are closed because why the fuck am I going to sit here and listen to you after I just told you why I ever reacted the way I did and you didn't fucking listen. You're purposely not trying to get it. So I'm not going to sit here and listen to you after you just disrespected me. So I started playing with stuff and then she's like, and the way you're acting right now is very rude. Dude, I don't give a fuck. I just told you about how I felt and you just completely disregarded it and manipulated it because you needed me. I don't give a fuck. So to make a long story short, we end up arguing really loud because she just starts yelling. And I'm like, who the fuck is she talking to? Like, literally, y'all should have seen my face. Like, I hate when people yell at me. That's like, 
my biggest pet peeve don't fucking yell at me because i feel like when you start getting and yelling at me i feel like you want to show and i would hate to be the one to put on the show because if you try and go to the circus we could go to the circus and i promise you i'm gonna be the biggest fucking clown there showing the fuck out because who 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 so as she you know was yelling or whatever i immediately called my best friend because i'm like yeah no this not happening like this this we we not finna do this bro like it just really gave me ptsd so i called my best friend and i tell her what was going on she's like all right i'm on my way so she ends up you know me and her end up hanging up or whatever i changed my clothes because in my mind i'm like it's go time it is fucking it's go time because all that, all the the approach, the conversation, the yelling and shit, that just in my head was like, I came to the conclusion, you want to fight. You want to fight. So I put on my Air Forces. I changed my shirt. Put my, I kept my jacket on and I put on some tights and I'm fuming because I'm like, there is no fucking way. I'm sitting here actually expressing how I feel and I'm being told that that doesn't matter and because you needed me we're no bro the one don't like wasn't you just crying about your friends doing the same thing to you like I don't it's not I just oh god I was bro peer mediation comes peer mediation was me my best friend our mutual friend and her we're talking or whatever and the whole time like it just felt like high school and if you knew me in high school you knew peer mediation never worked because i always wanted to fight and peer mediation i don't know i feel like peer mediation is low-key the quickest way for the person you have an issue with to just lie like they just want to lie in front of authority to make it seem like they was in the right this whole time and that they're just so godly and angel like and they didn't do anything wrong no like i really don't understand why we have peer mediation and all people doing peer mediation is fucking lie so to make a long story short i was told by her that my feelings she didn't give a fuck about my feelings she wasn't going to apologize because she's not a fake ass bitch and she didn't feel sorry for apologizing and she didn't feel like she didn't do anything wrong I blatantly told you three million times what you did wrong and every time you one tried to act like you didn't know what the fuck was going on or what was being talked about and two you tried to justify the fact that because you needed me it was okay for you to wake me up out of my sleep like what and then just the whole time just being manipulative and being gaslighting me the whole time like we kept talking about the instagram post that i made that was passive aggressive as fuck that's all we kept talking about you knew it was about you i'm not saying it wasn't i'm not gonna sit here and lie that like it wasn't it was about you but i didn't go as far as disrespect to her being like oh um uh this bitch or oh or tagging her like it was mad simple and random and nobody knew it was about you but you and then our one friend said that she thought it was about her and she didn't say anything but then turned around the mediation and was like now nah, nah you was wrong basically peer mediation was now nah, you're wrong basically i shouldn't have felt the way that i felt it wasn't that serious i'm not going to get an apology fuck your feelings though um and yeah that's that like how do we come to this conclusion how do we get here and my, me and my best friend were talking about that like there's no way that whole peer mediation was about me making a passive aggressive instagram post but she sat here and told me fuck my feelings eight times and she's not gonna apologize to me because she's not a fake ass bitch what did you apologizing for what you did wrong for how does that correlate with you being a fake ass bitch like I don't understand how some people were raised, but I feel like if I, even if I know that my intentions wasn't, you know, to do what I did and I did something wrong, I'm just going to fucking apologize. Like if she had apologized, it wouldn't have blown out of proportion. It only blew out of proportion because of a fucking Instagram post and because you just wanted somebody to make it seem like you were right. So that right there, click, both of them, gotta go, boom, now I'm friendless. And it didn't bother me because I'm a social fucking butterfly. Like, I can go out and make friends. I can go out and be social. That's not a problem. But it was just like, 
you oh my god and when i tell y'all that that situation right there triggered the fuck out of me like when i tell you i wanted to beat her up so bad after that because it was just no way that after that we came to the conclusion that oh well you know take your time you know go cool off and then we're going to be friends again after that no because i still didn't get a fucking apology and this whole peer mediation was bullshit Girl, 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 pissed me off. And then to make matters worse, after that whole situation, one of my roommates, Justin, I don't know if y'all remember him from um, some of my vlogs a couple weeks back prior to, you know, this one. Um, he's white and he was originally my roommate for this room. Why did he turn around and tell the RA that me and my roommate were smoking uh, tobacco products in our apartment and we were arguing the other night and he didn't feel safe. What you? <sighs> Bro. And mind y'all, like when that part happened, like after we had argued or whatever, I had went home just to, you know, clear my head or whatever. I'm home and I hear that I'm being reported to my RA. First of all, it's not like me and our roommate, our male roommates or roommates in general don't have like a common agreement or a bond. Like we've established bonds and vibes from the jump, which is why y'all seen them on my channel. But the fact that you went over our heads and told the RA that instead of us, especially when we're cool and close, like you didn't have to go tell the RA that like, it was none of your business as to why we were arguing. If you wanted to know, you would have came out and stopped it. You just sat in your room crying like a little bitch. You could have just asked us or said something. You went and snitched to the RA for what? We take up all the space in the apartment. First of all, if we want to be in our, our living room or dining area or whatever you want to call it and vibe, we can do that. Just like you can. We don't take over that space. It's just a common area that we hang out at. And there's nothing wrong with that. You've never let us know that you had an issue with that. You never told us that there were any problems. And mind you, prior to me even going home, I hung out with him. I had literally hung out with him right before I left with another one of our roommates in the house. And this was during homecoming. And we had went to um, get some food at this like little homecoming event thing. Never said a word never said a word and i was just like wow that's crazy so what he ended up doing was he told the ra that my ra then but my ra or our ra um wasn't able to deal with it because she was at work so they had to he reported it to the ra on call he reported that he felt unsafe he needed to be removed he didn't want to have peer mediation he just didn't feel safe um because he was confronted by my roommate and he ended up getting um, emergency removal, which means they um, placed him into emergency housing overnight and then he just completely moved out. So now I have this whole room to myself. Ain't that crazy? After I just told y'all I was sick, I just got over being sick, I dropped three classes, I changed my major, now I gotta deal with the people that I fucking live with, people that I'm laying my head next to. Like, come on, bro. Like, when I say that was a lot, like, I had so much anger and, like, just anger built up. Like, I really, really wanted to, like, punch a wall. I wanted to put somebody's head, like, through a fucking window. Like, when I tell you I thought I was losing my mind, like, it was just so freaking much then on top of that i'm dealing with getting my financial aid corrected with dsu like that was such a fucking <sighs> y'all that the shit that i just said that was a lot that was a fucking lot and having to deal with all that like i noticed like towards the end of october and mid-october like i was very like yeah, I guess you could say I was bitter. Not because I didn't have friends. That wasn't the problem. I didn't give a fuck about that. Because one thing about it, I'm going to make me a motherfucking friend. And I have friends all over. But it was really just the fact that for once in my life, I'm actually confident in being vocal with how I'm feeling when it comes to how I feel about certain things. And to just completely be disrespected and to have your feelings disregarded after everything that I just mentioned to you, that sent me over the edge sent me over the edge to the point where I literally went to therapy one day, just bawled my eyes out for like a good 10 minutes because 
it was just like the stress of school my living situation like and i'm not even gonna lie to you like the dynamic in my house definitely has changed it's not the same it doesn't feel how i made it feel in the very beginning like when i first got here i made sure that i was gonna you know even if i don't have a bomb with all my roommates i was gonna make sure that if i'm paying fifty three hundred dollars to live here a fucking semester that everybody's gonna feel welcome we're gonna you know have a good time um we're gonna be cool and cordial and now it's not like that it definitely feels like awkward and um it just doesn't feel the same and it just sucks because it's always it's always motherfuckers that ruin shit and i just hate that like and i don't know what's being said when i'm not around or when i wasn't here so i don't know how everybody views me or how everybody see i really don't give a fuck but um yeah so that's pretty much like everything that was going on um before i dropped my ken laugh class i um ended up meeting a new friend who reminds me of a college friend that i used to have um from dsu and me and her got really really cool and got real close and just started hanging out and going to parties and stuff like that so like right after all that happened you know i had another friend and like i said like it's not hard for me to make friends that's not the problem but it's like I don't be liking bitches like that to be letting them in my circle and after the whole thing with that like I just didn't want to be bothered with nobody like it was just like y'all bitches really do like a lot and I don't like that and I don't want to be around that like after a while you just get tired of shit and that's definitely something I was fucking tired of like but yeah she's cool cool peoples um we just stopped hanging out like a lot like i felt like we were definitely hanging out a lot and you know i was over there every fucking day and now you know we got our space and stuff like that um but yeah that was pretty much i love october so you know um after homecoming um i definitely bent more to myself um i still go out and do stuff i go to events um i go be social i go to class now um Class is about to end, the semester is about to end. Thank God my birthday's coming up. I just have more to look forward to. And um, looking back at it, um, I don't regret anything. I don't regret any decisions that I made. I don't regret how anything has gone because clearly it was a reason that it needed to happen. Um, I just wish it didn't happen during my first semester back at college because your girl was not mentally prepared for that. And child, when I tell you, college is college is college okay <laughs> but um in better news um i'm no longer a freshman after this semester i will be considered a sophomore for what would be my second semester as a freshman i'm a sophomore come next semester per i'm excited about that um I have about the same amount of classes next semester, but they're pretty light and I'm actually excited. Um, I'm excited for the next semester to tackle everything and to accomplish everything that I want. Um, I, like I said, I don't have any regrets. I really don't. Um, and you know, November, November, there, nothing really, not much happened in November. Um, I went out a few times. I seen the city girls. Um, I had my, some strip club experiences. I was clubbing. I was just having a good time. And, um, I bought inventory for Brad's way. I just been doing a whole bunch of stuff behind the scenes. And I feel like now I pretty much caught y'all up on my life. Um, November, I didn't post much. Cause like, it was like, I was starting to feel myself again. Like I was getting out of my funk. The only thing I could really say about, um, November was that, um i was smoking a lot i was smoking a lot because i was depressed um i got drunk one time i don't remember anything <laughs> um but i'm definitely doing a lot better i ended up buying my macbook which was right behind me um i have my own room now so this is you know the vibes that i got going on my best friend my fucking sister danny she comes into town on friday or yeah friday and i'm fucking excited because she's gonna be here um right before my birthday and that's probably the best birthday gift a bitch can get <laughs> my birthday's coming up 12 17 gang gang all my sages where you at hold your ground stand your ground um yeah i feel like i'm just rambling at this point but um yeah this is the tea girl and 
like I said, I don't care about nobody feeling somebody spared me. I did the bare minimum when it comes to um, what I mentioned in this video. I didn't do too much. I feel like I feel like I just told y'all. And if it comes off as me being nonchalant, I kind of am because it's like I've been dreading doing this, filming this, talking about it. But um, I noticed that one thing about me to help me cope and recover and to move on from stuff is best that I talk about it out loud so I can let it go. Let go and let God, basically. Um, and yeah, so that is the life update. <laughs> um, there's more to the life update. I just probably cannot remember. Um, I feel like I mentioned everything that y'all need to know or that y'all want to know. If y'all have any questions, though, put them down below. I'll do a QA and a video um, apart for, uh, for Vlogmas um, because why not? Um, y'all probably got more questions and stuff like that. And I have no problem answering them. So now when y'all see like weekly vlogs, these vlogs are were literally recorded back from October. I didn't want to get rid of the footage because it's like, it already happened. So why get rid of the footage? Um, and it's pretty good footage. So um, if you see, like I said, weekly vlogs from here on out, um, well, from here on to the rest of this year, um, they're from like maybe two months ago. <laughs> They're not within the present, but everything else will be within the present. So try not to get confused. I'm so sorry that it has to be done this way. Y'all know I'm backwards and crazy, but um, thank you guys for letting me tell y'all my story. Um, I love y'all so freaking much. Uh, make sure y'all subscribe to me. Make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Snapchat, uh, TikTok, because you know we use TikTok famous or whatever. Um, at Night of Brad, I love y'all so much. Make sure y'all go shop Brad's Way because we have restocked and that's on period. And like I said, I love y'all so much and I will see y'all in my next video.